So the first thing that you'll need is coffee. We'll be using our Nicaragua Maurica Jeep coffee. A kettle, preferably one that controls temperature, but if it doesn't, that's okay. A set of scales, a carafe to plunge into, the filter cap, filter papers, scoop, the stirrer to agitate, and of course, your AeroPress. We're gonna be using the Mazza grinder here, but if you didn't have that, you can actually get hand grinders, which are very useful for home. You can get a timer like this, or just use your phone. We'll be using a single origin coffee today from Nicaragua, and the variety type is Maurica Jeep, also known as the elephant bean, known for its enormous size. This coffee is hand-picked, fully washed, and grown at elevations of 1,300 meters above sea level, in enriched volcanic soil with ample temperature for it to prosper. Victoria have a really nice established relationship with this farm and have for the past 25 years. So this kind of leads us into the steps involved to make an AeroPress. The first thing that we need to do is grind our coffee. So we're just gonna be grinding a fairly coarse grind. The next thing that we need to do is just ensure that our apparatuses that we're gonna be using are heated. Just a little bit of water in both the AeroPress and also the carafe. This just maintains temperature throughout the brew, which is really, really important. Before I go into it, what we're gonna be doing and how we're gonna brew this apparatus is called a fully immersion. So by that, I mean, the coffee and water are interacting with each other to extract what we want out of it. Also, the way we do it is an inverted method, so I'm actually brewing it upside down. It's just the easiest way to brew an AeroPress, in my opinion. So once these are heated, just discard the water, place the AeroPress on the scales, and just we want to ensure that it says zero. So what we need is just one scoop, and that should equate to about 13 to 15 grams of coffee. Again, we're going to tear that off one more time, just to ensure it says zero. What we're gonna do is actually just settle the coffee slightly so it's just flat and level. Next thing that we're gonna do is look at our filter papers. So there's two type of filters, paper or metal. Difference being paper will filter out any kind of oils and you'll get left with a kind of cleaner cup. Whereas metal doesn't filter out any of those oils and you're left with more of a muddy, bigger body style of coffee. So we're just gonna be using our paper filters. One important factor of brewing an AeroPress is temperature of water. That can range from anything from 80 degrees to 95 degrees. In simple terms, the hotter the temperature, the faster the brew time, the lower the temperature, you can extend that brew time out slightly. So I've just chosen 95 degrees as a baseline. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add in a little bit of water. And it's usually around double the amount of water to dry coffee. Just ensure that we have our timer ready and set. So we're gonna be starting our timer as soon as we put water onto the coffee. Getting our stirrer and we wanna agitate for about 20 seconds and that just ensures that we activate and start the extraction process. So we're gonna do a 30 second bloom time and then add in our rest of the desired water which is approximately 200 to 230 mils of water. Ensure that we put our cap on straight away just to maintain that temperature. Take the AeroPress off the scales and we just wanna press out any air out of that apparatus. So we're looking for a total brew time of two minutes to two minutes 15. We wanna get our carafe, place it on top, flip it nice and safe. We wanna start pressing down. Ideally, we just want a nice smooth press, nothing too hard. So we wanna press down until we hear everything kind of being released. Really, really easy to clean. All you need to do is take the cap off, press into a bin, just rinse it and you're ready to go again. The general flavor profile of an AeroPress is something that will be quite clean with a good body. And that really lends itself to the Nicaragua coffee in particular, and more in general, Central American coffees. So what you get from this coffee is a medium body, a nice subtle sweetness, hints of fruit, and a really subtle spice note. So there you go, that's how you make an AeroPress. It's one of the easiest apparatuses to use at home where you can get delicious coffee pretty much every time that you make one.